Let's play a game of guess who, or what in this case. And there's your first hint already. And here's your second hint. Over 4 million people voluntarily do this every year. And many of these people spend around 200,000 Hong Kong dollars to do this the right way. Unfortunately though, too many of those people end up quitting midway through it. I think by now we would all have guessed that this is marriage. Marriage is one of those choices, up there with your job, children, and any other life-defining ones that could very well ruin your life. But it's also one of those choices, up there with your job, children, any other choices that we are raised to believe is not really a choice, but rather something we should be doing at some point. Most of us will be getting a job to survive, and most of us will probably have guardians who want grandchildren to coddle. I must admit though, marriage is becoming less of one of those choices, the latter kind which you're all conditioned to think is mandatory, but it still is and will forever be the former kind, a potentially life-changing one. This trend of marriage no longer being a social expectation for many of us is a result of both positive and negative changes. For example, on one hand, fewer women get married because they now have the opportunity to pursue a career on their own. But on the other hand, it may also be a testament to the rising student debt and economic pressures on our young people. But regardless of its causes, how does the government incentivize marriage and why they even do it in the first place? We've all heard of the phrase, get married to save taxes. There are numerous other perks though from policies such as health insurance. A married couple whose employers both offer health insurance can choose the plan that's best for them. Or married couples can often qualify for better terms on loans or credit. At this point, it's hard to judge people for getting married for money. Maybe you all do to some extent. And maybe these marriages built on relatively rational decisions in the economic and monetary sense of the word stand the test of time compared to those built on emotions. But this is a whole other can of worms. Let's come back to the government. Apart from monetary incentives, here's another crazy example of the government trying to get us to tie the knot. The US government funded a $5 million national media campaign to encourage marriage. That is 1,400,560.2 Big Mac's gone to making YouTube videos about marriage. If you've been paying attention, and you're a normal person of course, the next thought in your head after hearing the fact that one million more people could have tried a Big Mac but couldn't because of the government's obsession with marriage is why are they doing this? What could possibly be better than a Big Mac? As we try to answer this question together, we're all going to try to retain some faith in the government. Though I agree that anyone who chooses marriage propaganda over Big Macs cannot be trusted. Still, I don't want to immediately jump to the government is wasting our money on silly YouTube videos, so here's some potential reasons I found particularly intriguing. Firstly, most governments in developed countries are desperate for more children due to the aging population. Governments want these children to preferably be productive young things that don't ask for too much from the government and grow up to contribute to the GDP. And that was mostly a joke, mostly. Anyways, the best way to achieve this is apparently to follow the success sequence. This series of time events claims if you get married before you have children, you're more likely to escape the cycle of poverty and your children are less likely to experience financial or familial instability as well. This results in fewer school attendance problems or higher academic achievements in general. It does seem like a win-win situation for the government. Not only does being married make the decision to procreate more approachable, but it also means Means those children possibly have a higher chance of becoming productive members of society with their nice packed CVs. An added bonus is that this is a cycle. Members of society and people who are born into happy households have greater success forming happy households themselves and so on and so forth until our planet is again filled with young people and an aging population becomes a distant memory. But secondly, it improves financial situations for individuals. It is always in the government's best interest to ensure all of us have a decent quality of living because the government cares about us or they just don't want to spend too much money on benefits for us. Either way, many smart researchers have told us about all the benefits of marriage, the male marital wage premium, the behavioural changes of saving more and a potential financial gain also to women, though for most working mothers the motherhood penalty is probably more applicable. But now for the fun part, roasting the government for wasting our tax money. Marriage may not be the social good we all think it is for three reasons. Firstly, surprise surprise, the old spinster cat lady is simply a myth. Single people may still raise cats of course, but more of them are out socialising, caring for their siblings and parents, and helping out neighbours. 
Despite marriage being treated as a cure to loneliness, marriage may actually isolate you from your other social connections. Married people are relatively less likely to visit parents or siblings and less inclined to offer them support. Even more surprising is that this does not have anything to do with children. In fact, the marriages without children are the most isolated ones. It also doesn't have anything to do with your race or socioeconomic status. In other words, the cause is intrinsic to marriage. A potential reason for this is that married people become more autonomous and thus require less help and also give less help to their communities. But secondly, I spot a couple cynics in the room who are waiting for the D word. Yes, divorce. And yes, I also refuse to change my script even though I'm now talking to my camera screen in my room by myself. But back to divorce. A particularly relevant implication of increasing divorce rate for exploration of government incentives today is that divorce erodes the large societal benefit of stability for children. The stability of the environment may very well be distinct from marital status. More stability may come instead from an extended family structure of cohabitating couples instead of the traditional married nuclear family. Making that public show of commitment with a white dress and all might encourage more stable relationships, but cohabitating couples also can't just walk away overnight because of shared property or shared children, for instance. But finally, another implication of divorce is that the process itself inflicts the same claimed harms of unmarried couples on their children. Children who go through a divorce show more behavioural, emotional, academic or health-related issues than their counterparts. It's then easy to claim the conclusion of all of this is that the government is stupid, but not so quick. All of those divorce stats could really lean either way, both for and against pro-marriage policies. The most intuitive conclusion is, of course, the government is wasting money on encouraging fragile relationships that leave more ruin in their wake. However, you could equally say that the government's pro-marriage propaganda can work to discourage divorce. Divorce is inevitable, just like marriage was an inevitable phenomenon. Even if it could go back to Stone Age and spread anti-marriage propaganda, marriage rose out of the necessity to protect women and children. Given this inevitability, maybe the best course of action for the government is to do everything it can to make marriage as binding as possible, legally and societally. The ethics behind doing this is of course questionable. A lack of access to divorce may lead individuals to stay in dysfunctional or toxic relationships, for instance. But this is all just to say that instead of trying to come to a definitive conclusion on whether I think the government is stupid to choose marriage propaganda over Big Macs, I want all of us to see the bigger picture here. Marriage is not an individual affair. And I don't mean that in terms of polygamy, but the widespread societal impacts of marriage that guide the government's public policy decisions. So don't be afraid to use your spouse as a tax shelter. The government wanted you to get married for that very reason. And the next time you push your relatives ask when you're getting hitched, keep your anger in check, knowing that the government is much pushier than them. Thank you.